A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. A man going on a journey called in his servants and entrusted his possessions to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to a third one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. Immediately the one who received five talents went and traded with them and made another five. Likewise, the one who received two made another two. But the man who received one went off and dug a hole in the ground and buried his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants came back and settled accounts with them. The one who had received five talents came forward bringing the additional five. He said, Master, you gave me five talents. See, I have made five more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who received two talents also came forward and said, Master, you gave me two talents. See, I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, my good and faithful servant. Since you were faithful in small matters, I will give you great responsibilities. Come, share your master's joy. Then the one who had received the one talent came forward and said, Master, I knew you were a demanding person, harvesting where you did not plant, and gathering where you did not scatter. So out of fear, I went off and buried your talent in the ground. Here it is back. His master said to him in reply, You wicked, lazy servant! So you knew that I harvest where I did not plant, and gather where I did not scatter? Should you not have put my money in the bank so that I could have got it back with interest on my return? Now then, take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten. For to everyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And throw this useless servant into the darkness outside, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. A pastor currently struggling to pay the bills in a parish of 2,500 households was exasperated that such a large congregation was made up of such poor givers. Certainly, this is nothing new in most parishes. In a sermon, he spoke of the extreme difference between Catholics today and the generation of their immigrant ancestors at the turn of the 20th century. Well, you know, my friends, our European immigrant ancestors were, in most cases, not part of the elite. Most of our immigrant ancestors endured various prejudices because of their nationalities and because of their Catholic religion. They spoke little English, had moved to cities from farms, and thus had few skills, were uneducated, and thus took menial jobs. The majority of these immigrants lived at or below the poverty level in urban ghettos. These Catholic immigrants built more churches than any generation since, and who built huge cathedral-like edifices that are unmatched by hardly anything today. This group with no health care built many hospitals and gave free medical care. They so valued education for their children that they built more schools than anyone except the government. Then they worked three and four jobs to put their children through these Catholic schools and then sent them to college. Today, a pastor can hardly afford to repair the church air conditioning, let alone build a school. Today, a pastor cannot afford to install a sound system that would equal the home movie sound system of some parishioners. Our immigrant ancestors routinely gave a quarter to the church for every dollar earned. Today's Catholic families give slightly more than a nickel. 
We must be careful with the word talent in our parable today. A talent cannot be equated with what we call talents today. To understand the gravity of Jesus' message, we must understand that a talent in Jesus' culture was a monetary denomination equal to about 6,000 denarii. Now, a denarius was roughly one day's wage. Therefore, a talent was the equivalent of somewhere between 16 and 20 years worth of wages. Even the servant who received only one talent was given a huge responsibility. Wealth had been seen as a blessing from God, however. To suddenly acquire money was viewed as suspect, implying immoral or illegal activity. We find out from the third servant that the master was, in fact, dishonorable. The implication of Jesus' story is that the first two servants were not merely clever. Rather, they had imitated their master. The third servant had actually acted morally and prudently according to culture and religious standards. Lending money at interest and investing was considered sinful. To truly protect money, you secretly buried it. As usual, Jesus' parable turns expectations upside down. Jesus in no way intended to applaud immoral behavior, but he did wish to point out that the servants were to be admired for imitating their master. Their master was a risk-taker, and the master rewarded the servants' risk-taking while punishing the one who had played life too safe. Today's gospel is a continuation of last week's gospel about the second coming. In today's parable, Jesus is instructing us about how to live as we await God's kingdom. We are to imitate our master. We are to take risks with the faith with which Jesus has entrusted us, investing it so that God's kingdom will grow. Our immigrant Catholics risked everything to build a magnificent church system, a system of hospitals, schools, and charitable organizations that have been second to none. These are only outward signs of an inner commitment to God and a sense of faith that was willing to act. My sisters and brothers, next Sunday, the Feast of Christ the King, we will celebrate the second coming of Christ. As servants of God, what will we have to show for all that has been entrusted to us? Will we have been safe that our faith accomplished nothing? Or will we show a return on our investment? Investing in the kingdom, may the Lord give you peace.